Karma got me hard. I got caught with my affair at a traffic light. My husband was right next to us. I'm broke, I've ruined my marriage, and I got caught in the absolute worst way. Some backstory so you understand. My name is Alicia, and I am a 35-year-old woman. I'm married to Dave, a 36-year-old man. We live in the United States and have been married for about six years. Dave and I met in college, and it felt like destiny brought us together. He was charming, with a smile that could light up a room, and I was totally smitten. We hit it off right away, spending all our time together, laughing, studying, and just enjoying each other's company. After we graduated, we moved to the city and started building our lives. But somewhere along the way, things started to change. Life got real, you know? We got caught up in work, bills, and all the other stuff that comes with being adults. Before we knew it, we were drifting apart without even realizing it. I started feeling lonely and lost, craving something more. And then I met this guy who made me feel alive again, even if it was just for a moment. Looking back, I know it was a mistake. But in that moment, it felt like the only way to break free from the emptiness I was feeling. I worked at a boutique and it was an absolute blast. Sure, I didn't rake in as much dough as Dave, but it gave me some extra cash to treat myself. Plus, being surrounded by trendy clothes and friendly co-workers made every day feel like a party. Meanwhile, Dave was always swamped with work. As a big shot at his company, he made the big bucks but barely had time to breathe. He was constantly dashing from one meeting to another, trying to keep up with his job. I respected his hustle, but it meant we didn't get to hang out as much as I'd like. Dave made a lot of money, almost 10 times what I made, and so he took care of most of the bills. He handled the rent, utilities, and all that grown-up stuff. My job left me with a bit more spending money for treats like new shoes or a girl's night out. Dave gave me money, of course, but I didn't want to stay at home and be bored all day, so I picked up my job. I always wished Dave could kick back more often, but I knew his job was important. And when we did get a chance to chill together, whether it was a cozy night in or a spontaneous date night, it reminded me that love beats dollars any day well until I met Richard. While working at the boutique, I met Richard on his first day as a new guy on the team. Right off the bat, he brought this vibe that just drew people in. Richard had this way about him, friendly, upbeat, and always with a smile plastered on his face. What really made Richard stand out was his fashion sense. He just knew what looked good on people. Whether it was finding the perfect pair of jeans or a killer dress, he had this knack for picking out stuff that made everyone look and feel awesome. It was like he had this magic touch when it came to clothes. Pretty soon, word got out about Richard, and customers started flocking to the boutique. They couldn't get enough of his style tips and friendly demeanor. It was like he was the main attraction, pulling in crowds left and right. Seeing him work his magic, I couldn't help but be impressed by his talent and how effortlessly he connected with people. As days passed, I noticed Richard paying more attention to me. He'd bring me coffee, take a moment to chat, and really listen when I talked. It was nice having someone show genuine interest in me. What really caught my attention was how Richard started complimenting my clothes. Coming from him, it meant a lot. He had this keen eye for fashion, so if he said I looked good, I knew I was rocking it. It made me feel confident and appreciated, especially in a place where style was everything. I couldn't deny that I enjoyed the attention from Richard. Sure, I was married, but it felt good to have someone notice me, to make me feel special. And Richard was just so friendly and easy to talk to. It was hard not to be drawn to him. Of course, not everyone in the boutique was thrilled about our growing closeness. I could feel the envy from the other sales associates and even some of the customers. But I tried not to let it bother me. I knew where my heart belonged, even if Richard's attention was a tempting distraction. As Richard's attention continued, I found myself enjoying it more and more. Despite being married, I couldn't deny the thrill of someone noticing me, making me feel special in a way that I hadn't felt in a long time. I convinced myself that there was nothing wrong with enjoying the attention. After all, it was just harmless flirting, right? I reassured myself that Richard knew I was married, so there was no way he would cross any lines. I told myself that I was overthinking it, that Richard just wanted to be friends and nothing more. And deep down, I wanted to believe it. As Richard and I grew closer, we exchanged personal numbers and started talking outside of work. It felt exciting, having someone to share my thoughts and feelings with outside of the office. 
but at the same time, there was a nagging voice in the back of my mind, warning me to tread carefully. Of course, you already know how it goes. I ignored the voice. As Richard and I continued talking, our conversations started to cross boundaries. We'd flirt shamelessly, yet somehow managed to play it off as innocent banter. It was thrilling and dangerous all at once. What made it even more enticing was discovering how much we had in common. We shared similar interests, laughed at the same jokes, and found ourselves drawn to each other in ways I hadn't anticipated. Then, one day, Richard suggested we hang out at his place to watch a movie. Without hesitation, I agreed. His apartment was modest compared to the spacious house Dave and I owned, but I didn't mind. I didn't want to risk inviting Richard over to our place with its security cameras and nosy neighbors. Our neighborhood may have been quiet, but I knew gossip traveled fast. We settled in with a bowl of popcorn, and I found myself enjoying the simple pleasure of watching a movie with Richard. I couldn't remember the last time I had done this with Dave. Richard and I laughed, we cried, and we shared our thoughts on the film with an openness that felt liberating. But as the night went on, things started to feel different. Our jokes got a little flirtier, our touches lingered a bit longer, and I couldn't ignore the chemistry between us. It was exciting, it was scary, and I should have stopped, but I didn't. I knew I should have put a stop to it, but I couldn't resist the pull. Richard and I crossed a line, we had sex, and I cheated on Dave. He was away, as usual, closing some big deal, and I didn't rush home in the morning. The guilt weighed heavy on me, but I found myself blaming Dave. If he had been around more, maybe I wouldn't have strayed. It was a mess of emotions for me, guilt, regret, and anger all tangled up together. I knew what I did was wrong, but part of me couldn't help but feel justified. Dave was always buried in work, and he left me feeling lonely and neglected. In my mind, I convinced myself that I deserved some happiness even if it came at the expense of my marriage. But deep down, I knew there was no excuse for what I did. I betrayed Dave's trust, and that was something I couldn't take back. As the reality of my actions sank in, I couldn't help but wonder how I had let things spiral out of control. If only I had been stronger, if only I had resisted the temptation, maybe things wouldn't have ended up like this. But it was too late for regrets now. The damage was done, and I had to live with the consequences of my actions. There was no way I could bring myself to tell Dave that I had cheated on him. He'd drop me like a hot potato if he found out. I had to keep it hidden, no matter what. I made up my mind that I wouldn't continue my fling with Richard, but I also couldn't bear the thought of Dave leaving me. Despite our distance and his constant work commitments, I still loved him. He was the same guy I fell head over heels for back in college, driven, ambitious, and with a heart of gold. Richard could see the guilt written all over my face, and he tried to reassure me that I hadn't done anything wrong. Deep down, I knew he was lying, but his smooth talk and charm made it hard to resist. I knew I was being played, but Richard had a way of making me believe anything he said. If he told me the sky was green, I'd probably believe him. He was just that convincing. I got ready and headed home, trying to clear my head. Richard's words kept replaying in my mind. He said it wasn't my fault, and I wanted to believe him so badly. Dave still wasn't back, but I expected that. He said he'd be home the next day. I called in sick to work and decided to spend the day sleeping, hoping it would help me shake off the guilt and confusion. To avoid Richard's tempting presence, I thought about quitting my job. I mulled it over for hours, even after waking up from my nap but something kept nagging at me. Quitting felt like giving up. I told myself that I would go to work the next few days and hope things wouldn't be too awkward. If they were awkward, I would quit, but if they weren't, I'd continue. I honestly thought it would be awkward, but Richard kept pouring on the charm, bringing me coffee, helping with sales, and showering me with compliments. It made me feel weak, like I was failing all over again. At that moment, I made a choice. I decided to go for what I wanted with Richard, no matter what. I convinced myself that I could keep it all hidden from Dave. He would never even meet Richard, and Dave was talking about working less so he'd be around more. By that time, once Dave was available more, I would drop Richard and work on my marriage with him. I thought I could have the best of both worlds. But looking back, I see how wrong I was. I was playing with fire, 
and it was only a matter of time before I got burned. Um, and that's how my secret affair with Richard carried on. We'd wait until the end of our shifts, then sneak off to his place. I even ditched driving to work, leaving my car at home so Richard and I could ride together. It was thrilling, and I couldn't get enough of it. I still loved Dave, I really did. But Richard's attention was like a drug addictive and irresistible. It made me feel wanted in a way I hadn't felt in ages, and I savored every moment of it. Dave was still as busy as ever, hardly ever home. But I didn't mind anymore, not when I had Richard to keep me company. I stopped caring whether Dave was around or not. As long as Richard was there, I was content. Deep down, I knew Richard didn't love me either. I knew it was only a matter of time before he got bored and moved on. But I pushed those thoughts aside, choosing to deal with them when the time came. Because I was happy to bask in the attention and affection Richard showered on me. Funny enough, I knew Richard had a girlfriend too, but they didn't live together. I had seen her pictures and their text messages on his phone. But I couldn't bring myself to complain or confront him about it because, well, I was married. Dave loved me deeply, and I felt guilty for betraying him. But I was too caught up in the excitement of being with Richard to care that what I was doing was wrong. It was selfish, I know, but I couldn't seem to stop myself. At one point, I got really paranoid. I started thinking if I was sneaking around behind Dave's back, maybe he was too. I checked his phone over and over, searching for any signs of cheating. I even went as far as installing a keylogger on his phone. But there was nothing there. Dave wasn't cheating on me. He was just working his butt off. And it was really paying off. Dave was bringing in serious cash. We were living in this massive seven-bedroom house with all the bells and whistles, a home theater, a man cave, even a swimming pool. We had a fleet of cars, all thanks to Dave's hard work. We also had a maid and a gardener who came by every few days, but they didn't live with us. That was my decision. It wasn't because I looked down on them or anything like that. In fact, I came from a really humble background. At one point, Dave even had to cover my college fees, believe it or not. I just preferred to keep things private and personal. We hadn't started a family yet, but that was a conscious decision we made together. We both agreed to wait a few more years, maybe until I was around 38 or 39. Dave wanted to be a hands-on dad, but he knew he was too busy with work right now to give that kind of attention to our kids. So we decided to hold off until he could settle into a more relaxed role and be there for them. At one point, Dave almost caught me red-handed. See, I had this habit of crashing at Richard's place when Dave was away. Why spend the night alone when I could hang out with Richard? That was our mindset. So it became kind of routine for me to stay over at his place, especially if I had the next day off work. One day after work, Richard and I headed to his house as usual. But a few hours later, I got a call from Dave saying he was back home and asking where I was. I was genuinely caught off guard because he hadn't mentioned anything about coming home early. He said it was a spur of the moment decision and that he missed me. I had to bolt home. And let me tell you, public transport was not on my side, especially since I'd stopped using our cars. When I finally got home, I had to come up with some excuse. I told Dave I had gone out for a bit because I was bored at home and surprisingly, he bought it. He even seemed sympathetic, which just made me feel even more guilty. After that close call, Dave started asking questions. He wondered why I stopped using the cars to go to work. I made up some story about wanting to feel like a regular person and not wanting my coworkers, who actually needed the job, to think I was trying to show off. It was a lame excuse, but Dave seemed to buy it. My blood turned to ice and I was frozen in place like a deer caught in headlights. Richard must have noticed my sudden silence and followed my gaze to the Tesla. The look on my face must have given it all away because he frowned in concern. Finally, the light changed to green and Dave started to drive away. But before he could leave, he continued recording and turned to Richard asking, do you know she's married? It was clear he was struggling to contain his anger. After questioning Richard, he drove off, leaving me to face the consequences alone. Richard glanced at me, clearly taken aback by the sudden turn of events. I could see the gears turning in his head as he processed what had just happened. He knew I was fucked. No, Richard could sense that going to his place was out of the question after what had just happened. He offered to drop me off at home, but I knew that wasn't a good idea. Dave could be unpredictable when he was angry, 
and I needed to give him some space to cool down before I could even attempt to talk things out with him. So I asked Richard to take me to my sister's. She lived close by and was great with advice, being a therapist and all. Richard agreed and left me at her doorstep before driving off. I tried calling Dave, but he didn't pick up. I could practically feel his anger through the phone. At my sister's, I spilled everything. The affair, the guilt, the loneliness. She couldn't wrap her head around why I'd cheat on someone as perfect as Dave. He was, in her eyes, the ultimate catch-good-looking, successful, and kind-hearted. But I felt distant from him, lost in our marriage as he buried himself in work. Richard's attention was a temporary escape from the emptiness at home. My sister said I should have talked to Dave instead of cheating. I sarcastically brushed off her suggestion, pointing out that it was too late for that and that Dave had just caught me kissing another guy at a red light. I spent a few hours at my sister's, cooling off and trying to gather my thoughts. She whipped up some food, and her comforting presence helped ease my nerves. She even offered to come back home with me if I was too scared. But I reassured her that Dave, despite his anger, would never resort to violence. That just wasn't his style. After some time, I still couldn't reach Dave on the phone, but I decided to take a chance and head back home. As I approached the house, I noticed my belongings strewn across the porch. Dave had wasted no time in tossing them out. I knocked on the door, hoping to reason with him, but Dave was resolute. He claimed he had helped me gather my things and was kicking me out of the house. I pleaded with him, begging for a chance to talk things through and apologizing profusely. But Dave wouldn't budge. He insisted on me leaving, but at least he hadn't thrown my stuff out onto the street. Dave explained that he didn't want my belongings to be stolen, considering they were expensive. It was clear he was hurt and angry, and there was no convincing him otherwise. Dave's words hit me like a punch to the gut. No matter what excuses or explanations I tried to throw at him, he wouldn't listen. I pleaded with him, telling him that the affair was just a result of my loneliness, that it meant nothing serious. I promised I was planning to end things with Richard, but Dave saw right through my words. He was fed up with my excuses, calling them bullshit, and stormed back into the house, leaving me standing there, shattered and alone. His harsh words cut deep, accusing me of distancing myself from him for a reason he now understood all too well. Dave declared that we were definitely heading for divorce and there was no chance of salvaging our marriage. I desperately suggested couples counseling with my sister, but he only laughed, dismissing the idea as futile. It was clear that he had made up his mind and there was nothing I could say or do to change it. With a heavy heart, I gathered my belongings and called for an Uber. Dave's parting words stung even more as he informed me that he had withdrawn his share of the money from our joint account. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but deep down I knew I couldn't argue with him. The truth was, Dave was the main breadwinner, earning nearly 10 times more than I did. He had always been financially savvy, diligently saving his earnings while I, on the other hand, tended to spend frivolously on things I enjoyed. I had grown accustomed to Dave taking care of our finances, never bothering to save much myself. Now that I was faced with the consequences of my carelessness, I couldn't help but regret my past decisions. With nowhere else to turn, I considered my options. My parents lived in another state, and I couldn't burden them with my troubles. That left me with only two choices, my sister or Richard. Both seemed like precarious options, each with its own set of complications and uncertainties. But in that moment of desperation, I had no other choice but to reach out to them for help. On one hand, my sister had this constant need to fix everything, and it grated on my nerves. She just couldn't get that some things were beyond fixing, that some wounds were too deep. And then on the other hand, there was Richard, the guy who got me into this mess. If I wanted any shot at fixing things with Dave, I couldn't be anywhere near Richard. But with no money for a hotel and nowhere else to go, I reluctantly decided to give Richard a shot. Staying with my sister was risky. Her husband and kids might not be too happy about me crashing at their place out of the blue. So, swallowing my pride, I called Richard, but before I could even explain, he shut me down, saying he wasn't interested in us anymore. He'd decided to work things out with his girlfriend, leaving me stranded with nowhere to go. He even hung up before I could curse him out, the bastard. I was truly alone in this mess. It was beyond frustrating, 
Richard had left me high and dry in a mess he played a part in creating. With nowhere else to turn, I realized my only options were crashing at my sister's or facing the grim reality of a homeless shelter. And there was no way I was going down that road. Summoning what was left of my pride, I called my sister and poured out everything. To my surprise, she was more than willing to lend a helping hand. An Uber took me away to her place, where she greeted me with open arms. She rustled up some food once again and offered me a place to crash for the night. I was immensely relieved and grateful for her kindness. I had half expected her to turn me away. I dozed off for a bit, hoping to escape the mess for a moment. But when I woke up, my sister showed me this video Dave had sent her. It hit me like a ton of bricks. There was Richard, leaning in for a kiss in the car. And then afterwards, Dave's voice could be heard asking Richard if he knew I was married. It was pretty damn obvious what Dave was trying to show. I was floored. My sister explained that Dave had reached out to her, saying he wanted out of the marriage and wasn't interested in fixing things, despite her efforts to talk some sense into him and suggest counseling. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, my sister offered to hook me up with a lawyer she knew. But she warned me not to get my hopes up. The chances of getting anything from Dave were slim to none. I felt completely screwed, to be honest. I've made up my mind to wait for the lawyer's advice, though I'm not getting my hopes up too high. Dave's got solid video proof of me cheating, and that puts him in a pretty strong position. On top of that, the house is in his name, and there's even a prenup in place. Dave's always been the one bringing in the big bucks, and he's always been careful to protect his assets, hence the prenup. So realistically, the chances of me walking away with anything from this marriage are slim to none. But hey, I'll take whatever I can get. It's better than nothing. I guess karma really came back to bite me in the worst way possible. They weren't kidding when they said karma is a bitch. It sure slapped me hard. What hurts the most is that Richard, the jerk who helped me create this mess, won't face any consequences. It's all on me. But I refuse to let him off the hook that easily. I'll dig around, maybe find out who his girlfriend is, and make sure she knows the truth. I've got evidence on my phone that Richard's been cheating on her, and I won't hesitate to send it her way. I'm not going down alone in this mess. Either way, let this be a lesson. Cheating never pays off. It's just not worth it. I've done something that's making it difficult for me to think straight. My husband wants a divorce from me now because I got carried away with his father at our annual New Year's party. In fact, I think I've done something stupid, and I'm now facing the consequences of it. I'm not even going to try to make myself look good or seek validation because there's absolutely nothing I'll say that will not paint me out as a good person at all. I've messed up big time and I'm 100% aware of it. I just need help from you all. I'll take any help I can get. I just want to make sure that I can get this whole thing fixed. My name is Brianna and I'm a 29 years old accountant. I'm married to Luke, a 30 year old accountant. Yes, my husband and I are accountants, and you can very well say that it's our mutual careers that brought us together. We met at a function together and got interested in each other. I loved his personality and charisma a lot, and for the first time, I broke my rule of never wanting to date a man that does the same thing I do. I never wanted to date someone that has the same profession as me because I just felt like it will make use disagree a lot and there'll be no time because we'll be engaged in different activities. But I had no choice, ladies and gentlemen, lol. I got charmed by Luke, and I forgot all about my rule. In fact, I didn't think we'd last at first. I thought it would just be a fling because I didn't think Luke was ready to settle down. At least I'll speak for myself when I say that I wasn't ready to settle down yet. I'd been single for six months before I started dating Luke, and I never imagined getting married to him two years later. But it happened, and we got married and never looked back. Well, we never looked back until now. Now, I think I'm losing my husband, and that's just me hanging on to an invisible thread of hope. I feel like I've lost him already. What hurts me the most is that his father is involved. Luke hates his father, and now I've screws up. The name of Luke's father is Adrian, and he's 48 years old. He had Luke when he was just 18 years old. He met Luke's mother, Nancy, when they were in high school, and they dated till their final year of high school. But... Nancy got pregnant just after they were done with high school. They were both 18 years old, but they were still naive. Nancy's mother was sent out of her home and forced to live with Adrian. They basically started a family immediately. 
Nancy couldn't go to college, but Adrian was able to go. Long story short, Adrian cheated on Nancy two years after she gave birth to Luke. They broke up and Adrian never bothered seeing Luke again till he was in college. Luke was never ready to accept his father back into his life because his mother always told him how he left her. Adrian always tried getting back into Luke's life, but Luke promised never to betray his mother. So, I hope you guys now understand why what I did is a very big deal. Luke cannot stand seeing me and he's very upset. But wait, before you start judging me, let me make it clear that I didn't have an affair with Luke's father. I would never, and I have never. It's disgusting and stupid and I never did that. It's just that something happened at our New Year party and I'm on the verge of losing my husband. Luke and I have been married for two years now and we always find time to attend the New Year celebration Nancy throws. Nancy is now married to another man and he's the one that stepped up to be Luke's father. He's quite rich so he likes to throw a New Year's party every year. Luke always makes sure he never misses it and even while we were dating, he always invited me. I think I've gone to a total of four New Year's parties with him. The first one I went as his friend, the second one as his girlfriend, and the third and fourth one as his wife. But now, I don't think I can make it to the fifth New Year's party. I don't think Luke will stay married to me till then. There's usually no drama at each New Year party, but this year's own was immensely exceptional. There was a lot of drama, and I'm still shocked at how things just escalated all of a sudden. I'm writing this to you all barely 24 hours after the New Year's party. Writing is my way of venting and keeping my emotions in check, so when I found myself in this compromising situation, I decided to write as my way of letting off some steam. The drama started from Adrian's sudden presence at the New Year's party. Yes, you actually read that right. He suddenly showed up at the New Year's party. Luke and I were shocked, but Luke was the one I was really worried for. He always told me how much he hated his father and despised his presence. I know the pain he feels anytime the topic of his father's betrayal is brought up. I'm sure any man that didn't even grow up to see his father would feel the same. Whenever he told me stories about his father, I never tried to convince him to forgive him. I never tried playing the devil's advocate because I know the man I married would never hate someone without a valid reason. That's why I know that for him to ask for a divorce, I screwed up and I'm not denying that. I'm at fault and I'm wrong for getting carried away. I never should have done something to upset Luke so much. I would have felt better if it was somebody else. I despise myself for hurting him through his father. If I knew this would happen, I would have taken another decision that day. But I guess if wishes were horses, beggars would fly as high as they wanted. Before the New Year's party, Adrian had always been showing up whenever he wanted. He always did that before. But whenever he came, the gatekeeper always took care of him. Luke didn't even have to see him most times. He just got to know from his mother that Adrian showed up. Before I go on, I'd like to describe Adrian as the perfect definition of an opportunist and selfish bastard. I hate him with every living fiber in me and I believe that he should never be happy after what he'd done that day. I'm at fault for falling in his trap, but that doesn't mean I'll not wish that his karma finds him. He left his family, but never expected them to end up getting successful. So he came back years later and thought it was best to ruin their lives all over again. I never really had an encounter with him before. I'd only seen him once, and that was when he gate deadhead our wedding event. That was the only time I'd seen him, but I always recognized him from the pictures that were hung on Nancy's gate. It was so her gatekeeper could recognize him and never let him in. He was only able to get into the New Year's party because the gatekeeper had been on leave as he traveled to go celebrate the New Year's with his own family. It was someone else that had been tending to the gate and the person had not been careful enough to take notes of the faces coming in. Adrian used that opportunity to get into the party. On that particular day, Luke and I had a very intense argument. If you're wondering how intense our argument was, it was actually very intense and we almost didn't attend the party. We were having an argument about trying to have a child. Luke was ready and I wasn't ready because I was being considered for promotion at work. I knew that getting pregnant would automatically mean that I wouldn't get the promotion again. So that made me very worried. I've always wanted children, but I thought that we had time and there was no need to rush. I didn't want to rush into it and end up resenting myself and blaming other people for my choices. I also love my job a lot and I've always worked hard so I could get promoted and just feel like my hard work helped me get something. 
That's why I wanted to wait till I had my promotion for about a year before we tried having children. My decision made Luke very angry because he felt like he had given me enough time. In his defense, he's actually right because before we got married, we agreed to try having children two years after our marriage. Yeah, I thought my promotion would come a little later, but then I was surprised when I was told I was on the list. That's why I told Luke to wait a little longer, but he wasn't having it. Our argument lasted close to an hour, and we never came to any reasonable resolution. We were in no position to attend a party, but because Luke always promised his mother that he'd never miss any of those parties, we had to keep that promise and go. We didn't speak to each other throughout the car ride, and even when we got to the venue, we ignored each other. I've never been known to handle my alcohol. In fact, it's common knowledge among his family and mine that I'm a very bad drinker, but because of how angry and irritated I'd been, I had too many shots. I don't even know what was mixed in those drinks, but I just took anything the waiter had in his tray. I felt comfortable drinking because I believed that I was safe in Nancy's house with Luke around. I knew almost all the faces that attended the party, and even though Luke and I were not in speaking terms, I still believed that I had no reason to worry. I mean, it was an annual New Year's party that I'd attended four times in a row. I didn't think I'd see someone that would want to take advantage of my drunken state. So, barely 30 minutes after drinking, I had to run to the toilet to puke. I drank too much and was having a hard time standing up straight. I didn't see Luke around and I was afraid of puking in front of everyone, so I went alone. Before I got back to the party, I stumbled upon Adrian. I still remember seeing him in the hallway and he asked what was wrong with me. Yes, I was drunk, but I can remember that part. I don't handle alcohol well, even if it's a glass of wine, so I'm sure whatever I took was not enough to wipe out my memory. It was just my body system acting out like it usually did whenever I took alcohol. I recognized Adrian the moment I saw him, and then I asked him what he was doing at the party. He said some things I don't remember, and then he offered to hold my hand so I could stand upright. I refused to hold his hand at first, because even though I wasn't thinking straight, I knew that the fact that Adrian was dressed like he wanted to conceal his identity meant that he had bad intentions in mind. But Adrian didn't give up and he kept pestering me to take his hand. In that process, like showed up. I don't remember everything that happened, but I know that Luke got into an argument with Adrian and questioned him because he saw both of us standing alone. I was still upset with him, so I left both of them standing there. I went back to the party and decided to take a seat because I felt like the alcohol was going to make me dizzy. While I was sitting there, Luke came to sit beside me. He was very angry, and then he asked me why I was alone with his father. I explained everything to him, but he was still upset. He then warned me never to speak to his father again. While Luke and I were having the back and forth, Adrian showed up and tried causing a scene. Yep. He told me he pitied me because I was letting a man dictate who I spoke to. He started saying things to get into my head, and he accused Luke of being a controlling husband. He took advantage of the situation because he noticed my drunken state and wanted to use that to his advantage. Luke didn't say anything because the guests were starting to look our way, and he didn't want to embarrass his mother and draw more attention. If you're wondering what happened that made Luke ask for a divorce, then you're in luck, because that's what I'm about to say. Adrian asked me for a dance while I was seated with Luke. Luke told me not to dance with him, and then he walked me to sit down while he went to call the gatekeeper so he could escort Adrian out. After he left, Adrian managed to convince me to dance with him, and he told me he had something important to tell me. Yes, that's all he said to me, and I foolishly took his hand and started dancing with him. I don't really remember what we spoke about while dancing, but I know we didn't do anything inappropriate because I asked his mother just a few hours ago and she assured me that all we did was dance. She was the one that narrated most of the things that happened to me, but she told me Adrian held my waist and I didn't shrug his hands off. I danced with him and while we were dancing, Luke came back with the gatekeeper and saw me dancing with his father. He was very angry and he tried separating us, but I lashed out at him and called him a control freak in front of everyone. Yes, I did that and I'm not going to deny it because I remember doing that to him. I let my anger over our argument get to my head, and then I lashed out of him for no reason. I also let myself get swayed by his father's words, and that was wrong. 
I understand why he's angry because it felt like I chose to listen to his father instead of him. It felt like I picked Adrian over Luke, and I made it seem like I was judging him based on his father's words. He hates his father, and he's told me that almost every day. For me to have let myself get loose like that meant that I used his weakness against him. I'm wrong, and I'm disgusted with myself. According to his mother, Nancy, Luke left the party immediately after I called him a control freak. She told me that he appeared to be very angry, and he didn't even speak to her before he left. That's the first time he's done something like that, and it's my fault. I'm so ashamed right now because I cannot believe that I caused such a scene on such a special day. I let my thoughts get into my head, and I ruined my marriage. How could he forgive me? I know I messed up big time. I'm even embarrassed that Nancy bathed me and helped me change my clothes. According to her, I was quite drunk after everything and I was puking a lot. I can't believe I started my new year out like this. I'm also quite disappointed because I know it must have also been hard for Nancy to watch her daughter-in-law dance with the same man that left her and her son. The fact that she's suppressing her feelings and helping me out makes my guilt worse. I disrespected her too. I shouldn't have done what I did. I should have controlled my emotions. Getting promoted at work is not more than having a peaceful marriage. I called him a control freak because I thought he was trying to control my life by dictating when I got pregnant. That must have made him very upset. But what's worse is the fact that I danced with his father and let him hold my waist. I don't know why Adrian even did what he did. What does he stand to get by dancing with me? I don't know if he has any ulterior motives because it honestly doesn't make any sense. What does he stand to gain by telling me all those things about his son? He kept coming back and asking for a chance back into his son's life. Why does he think doing that would bring his son closer to him? I hold a grudge and I plan on making Adrian explain himself. If I didn't mess up by drinking, I would not even give him the time of day to begin with. It's not his fault. I'm the irresponsible adult that allowed things to get out of hand. I'm still at Nancy's place because she advised me not to go see him. She's his mother and she knows that when he's angry, he likes to have time alone. I also know that about him and that's why I've not tried going to see him. But barely six hours ago, Luke came here and asked to see me. I was very happy because I foolishly thought that he was going to forgive me. I fell on my knees and begged him with tears in my eyes. I told him I was extremely sorry and that I didn't mean to hurt him. At first, he just stood there and didn't say a word, but after some time, he told me he wanted a divorce. I was shocked. In fact, I was beyond shocked because I wasn't expecting that from him. I thought I heard something else and I asked him to repeat himself again. He did that and said exactly what he said before. I held his clothes and told him I was sorry. I tried everything, but his kind was made up. He told me he wanted a divorce and that he couldn't stand the fact that I teamed up with his father to embarrass him. I tried to make him understand that I wasn't in my right senses, but then he dropped another shocking revelation. He told me he also felt it was best for us to break up because he didn't see the need of staying married to a woman that didn't have the same parental choices like he did. He also demanded an apology to his mother. That was all he said before leaving me alone once again. In other words, he wants to ruin me because there's nothing more hurtful than the thought of losing him. I really hoped things would be right, but I guess it's not happening. I thought he'd forgive me, but he didn't. Do I blame him? Absolutely not. I do not blame him for the things he did because I know he's only reacting to what I did. I'm the one that deserves to be blacked. But I'm selfish. I just can't end my marriage like this. I want to make it work. I want him to forgive me. I don't want my desire to get promoted to get in between our marriage. My husband deserved more and I want to make it up to him. I can't let his vengeful father get in between us and I can't let my wrong choices ruin our four years of knowing each other. I need help, guys. Any ideas would be very much appreciated. I'll appreciate whatever you guys suggest. Just please help me out because I'm tired and I'm giving up. Update. <laughs> First of all, I want to tell you all that I'm immensely grateful for all you've written and suggested. I never imagined so many suggestions and I really want to say a big thank you. After updating you all that day, that was on January 1st, I decided to go see Adrian and give him a piece of my mind. I wanted to know why he thought it was right for him to do what he did. 
I couldn't sleep just thinking about how he had the audacity to hold my waist and dance with me when he could see that I was drunk. It was hard finding his place because I'd never been there before, and I never thought I'd have a reason to go there. But life happened, and I had to ask someone to ask around for the location of his apartment. I finally found it, and the surprising thing was that I saw his wife and two children there too. I knew he started his own family because I'd heard Nancy talking about it before. What I just couldn't understand was why he decided to keep tormenting Luke and Nancy when he'd already moved on with his life. Long ago, when I saw him at his apartment, I asked him that and he told me he was just trying to have his son back because he thought it was unfair that Nancy was the one at the receiving end of his care. Adrian felt like Luke was supposed to give him money now that he's a successful accountant. That's why he kept on coming and trying to get back into Luke's life. He felt like he was being cheated. When I asked him why he held my waist and danced with me, he told me that was his only way of getting Luke's attention. Yes, in other words, Adrian is a big bag of crap. I left his apartment immediately because I knew it was pointless talking to someone that was so entitled to something they didn't ever work hard for. I was very angry, but there was absolutely nothing I could do. I went back to our house, but Luke served me divorce papers instead. While I stayed with Nancy, he got the divorce papers ready. I guess I started my new year with getting divorced. He's not ready to charge his mind even though I'm hurt, I understand. He's a man that holds a grudge on his father. There's nothing I can do to validate my actions that day. He can never unsee his wife picking his father's side and insulting him. Even though we get back together, he'll always remember that day. And then there's the issue of having a child. He's not ready to wait, and I'm not ready now. I tried doing everything you guys suggested, but I've decided to let it go. I know that I am not ready to be a mother, and he's very sure he's ready to be a father. If I get promoted now, we'll have to wait another two years and he's not ready. Nancy strictly believes that we're getting divorced over something very trivial, but there's nothing she can do. Her son is a man of his own and she cannot question his marital life. It's a sad goodbye, but I had to say it anyway. I'm just thankful we don't work in the same back, because that would have stung. It would have been hard to see him every day, knowing we're going through a divorce. At the end of the day, I take full responsibility for my actions, and I believe that with these lessons I've learnt, I'd never act recklessly in the future ever again.